Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sulphur Christian Church. Thank you, Barbara, playing that beautiful piece. I love that song. Have for a long time. What a great, great song. Good morning to everybody uh, here. Uh, good morning to folks joining us online, uh, whether it's live or later on. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, uh, for August, the uh, Operation Christmas Child items uh, for August are school supplies and flip-flops. So if you remember downstairs, we have a um, container in the closet at the end of the fellowship hall uh, for Operation Christmas Child items. Uh, we still plan on doing that and it's August and usually we have to have all that completed in November, the beginning of November. So uh, keep that in mind that uh, Operation Christmas Child is still going to happen. So uh, keep that in mind and if you come across great deals while you're out uh, buying school supplies, uh, bring some of them in so that we can use those uh, when uh, we pack uh, shoe boxes here. Uh, in October and November, so keep that in mind. Also, uh, backpacks for the hygiene bags for the Family Resource Center are available here at the church. Uh, rather than sign up for specific items, uh, the ladies group decided that uh, everyone will fill bags with needed supplies. Um, take as many bags as you feel like you can fill, that you're able to fill, and then school starts on August 24th, so please have your filled bags back to church by Sunday, August 23rd, and we'll make sure that they get delivered. And if you need a uh, supply list, they can be found on the bulletin board in the back, and maybe we'll post those on Facebook as well or they're, something. They're on the Agape, the Agape Women's um, page. Group. Okay. They're All right. So ladies group uh, the list is on the agape ladies group uh, page on facebook also if you need a supply list so um, keep those things in mind uh, as we move forward and as uh, time keeps creeping up on us here for school to start and it looks like at least for some schools it's it's going to start so uh, also keep all that uh, in your prayers for uh, folks with kids going to school, staff, teachers, administrators, uh, there's a lot to it. You know, there's absolutely nothing normal happening on, on school site uh, these days. Everything has changed. Everything is different. And like most things, once kids show up and are in the building, I'm sure we'll have to make adjustments too. So keep us all that are at work in the school systems in your prayers and, and for the kids uh, too, as we go forward. So here in a minute, I'm, I'm going to pray uh, momentarily. Uh, if you have your communion elements with you, the, the something to drink and something to nibble on for to represent the body and the blood, uh, have those uh, ready because uh, I'm going to have Miss Barbara play here in a few minutes after our prayer request and prayer time. So uh, if you've already gotten your communion stuff ready, have that, have that available to yourself here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I know we've had uh, several uh, prayer requests uh, recently. Um, I know it's Johnny Roberts, correct, uh, passed away this week. So keep that family in your prayers and, uh, and other folks affected by COVID-19, cancer, so many sicknesses and illnesses. I do have a, a quick praise report. My brother finished his radiation treatments uh, this past week, and he looks great, and I think he feels okay. <laughs> he probably will tell you he feels great, but uh, uh, God's really helped him through uh, his process, uh, and he's just been a quiet warrior through the whole thing, never complains, just goes about his business, loving his family and, and doing the things that he needs to do. So very proud of my brother uh, for sticking it out and doing what he needs to do for his family. And, and uh, just, again, just a huge praise report for him. 
Any other uh, prayer requests or praises this morning? Miss Paula? Um, Alwyn Collins is the little three-year-old boy with cancer. He's had <clears throat> intensive chemotherapy all week, like nine hours every day this week. So he is, um, you know, really um, probably going to have to have platelets and blood several times this week. Um, his parents are not able to work right now because they just can't risk mm -hmm. taking anything into him. He's so immunocompromised. But um, his mom is going to be getting me some. They're like magnets that go on your car. So I'm going to, when I get those, if people would like to have one. Um, it's a fundraiser for them if people would want to donate. Or if you don't want one and you want to donate. Mm -hmm. Um, and then so he and Corey uh, had her second round of chemo in the hospital this week. Um, and she seems to be doing well with that. So she's, I think, a week or two weeks out and she has to go in chemo mm. until they finish her treatments. All right. So keep the 4A and the Combs family in your prayers. Uh, Ms. Jordan? Brian Ward is one of my employees. He was in a motorcycle accident on Friday. Um, another car didn't stop at the stoplight and hit him. So um, he said he's doing okay. He's got four fractured ribs and a concussion. So it could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. Those those ribs are no fun. That's uh, that's very painful. So keep. Him in your uh, ward was the last name, correct? Yes. Keep uh, him in your prayers uh, for a quick recovery. All right. And keep Hunter. Uh, uh, you know, I think most folks know that Hunter's had a little bit of a fever the last couple of days. Seems to be better, uh, more energetic, and eating. You know, so just keep him in your in your prayers. Uh, w w whatever that is, maybe just be allergies, but just keep little little guy in your prayers uh, as you're praying along. Um, there's so much we could pray about. We could go on and on and on, but fortunately, our Father knows everything. He knows all about it. He knows what's going on, and uh, that uh, He knows that His children are under attack all over the world. So. Uh, Let's do keep the persecuted Christians uh, in our prayers. That's going on, as you know, uh, all over the world, including here in America. Uh, you know, burning Bibles and and attacking churches is uh, is persecution. You can look at it any way you want, and whatever the source of hatred is, that's still uh, still ang anger coming out sideways if they're wrong, towards the wrong place. So. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just pray uh, for uh, Mr. Ward and for uh, the little Combs boy, oh, and then, uh, Lord, just uh, uh, so many people and uh, Sophie Forey and Lord Jesus, uh, we can go on and on. There's so many people in the Roberts family and, and so many more. And Father God, Lord Jesus, we lift up our the folks who uh, run our schools and the children that are getting ready to go back to school, whether it's at home or at school, it's going to be completely different. And uh, kids uh, operate best under routine, and uh, they're not going to have that for a while. So, Lord Jesus, I just pray for everybody involved. And then I pray for health and safety uh, within the school and with that outside the school walls as well, Lord Jesus. Father God, I just pray once again, that you'll quell this uh, virus and the things that are going on in America in particular that are disrupting everything. And Father God, Lord Jesus, just uh, above all things, help us to keep our eyes on you. We need to fix our eyes on you, Jesus. And if we do that, then a lot of the things going around on around us, well, doesn't necessarily make them go away, but it sure is better to keep our eyes on you than on the things that disturb us so deeply. But Father God, Lord Jesus, we know you've got this. We know you've got us. Lord, help us to keep that in our minds at all times. 
We praise you and thank you for this day and the opportunity to come together as a body of Christ, as a body of believers to worship you, to get together so that we feel more enabled and empowered to go out and be your hands and feet. Lord Jesus, we're just so thankful for this opportunity to serve and worship you. In your holy, precious, and amazing name we pray. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll bless this communion we're about to take, the body and the blood, and your sacrifice, and help us to remember the deep, deep, wonderful things that you've done for us, Lord Jesus, so that we can be forgiven and free. We're just so thankful, Father God, Lord Jesus, as we take the cup and we take the bread. Lord Jesus, remind us of the cross and all that it means to us, and the freedom and the wonder that comes with it. Your precious name we pray. Amen. it Wednesday night I had a great conversation on Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff uh, had Miss Aaron Orr uh, over and uh, we spoke uh, fairly in depth about um, Lifeline Children's Services and the things that they do and offer not just an adoption service but um, lots of other things there uh, taking care of uh, children that are not adopted, uh, not just in orphanages, but as, as they grow into adulthood and to give them and help them have options uh, in their lives and uh, lots of other things. I encourage you, uh, if you didn't get to see that yet, uh, to go check that out and then go to uh, their website and, and find a way that you can help because helping widows and orphans is not optional for Christians. It is a commandment. It is something we are called to do, is to help take care of orphans and widows. So uh, sometimes we have to seek out those opportunities, how we can best help folks, whether it's our time or our talents or our finances or, or whatever that happens to be. Uh, we may not take an orphan into our home directly uh, as parents, but there's a thousand other ways that we can help. So I encourage you to check that out if you've not, if you've not seen that. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to start out with a little scripture here this morning in 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with verse 16. And uh, the you regular folks know that uh, today we're we're at the third part of a series about Jesus being exalted in heaven, what his role in our lives truly is. So we're going to look uh, first at First Thessalonians chapter five, beginning with verse um, sixteen. And this is what it says. It says, <laughs> Be joyful always. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in what circumstances? All. Be, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. 
Hold on to the good and avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen. That's a good word. That's a good word we, we should study often and know very well. Now, we're going to actually flip backwards to the book of Acts, chapter 10, beginning with verse 39. Acts chapter 10, beginning with verse 39. Oh, and this is good too. And it's all good. But isn't it funny how God can make things so relevant at such incredible times? Acts 10, beginning with verse 39. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused, caused him to be seen. That word caused is very important. God caused Jesus to be seen alive. He was not seen by all the people, but by, listen to this, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everything who be everyone sorry, who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. God shows and he still causes us to see him today and he still chooses his witnesses today. What a what an incredible statement that is when you really think about it. So, as I was saying, today is part three of a sermon series that we've been doing called uh, Jesus Exalted in Heaven. So today is the third part of that. So let's review a little bit here. So um, for the past two Sundays, we've looked at Jesus' role as our heavenly Lord and Savior. You know, we can study his life here on earth and all the things that he did and all the things that he said. And a lot of his role with us and for us in heaven, he already told us about while he was on earth. What he was going to do, who he was going to be for us going forward after his arrest, crucifixion, death, resurrection, and ascension. He, he gave us a road map to follow him, literally and figuratively, once he went back to, to heaven. Now, we've explored how some of his um, earthly ministry continues to affect our everyday lives. In the first Sunday, uh, we learned through Scripture that, that Jesus was anointed and appointed a prophet, a high priest, and king. Our prophet, because he knew our future, and he knew his future, and he, he called out what he was going to be, and that continues. You see, Jesus continues to be our prophet because he knows our future. Jeremiah 29, 11 says he has a plan for us. It's a good plan, a plan to prosper us and not do us harm. So, so Jesus continues in his heavenly role to be our prophet. 
And, and I'm sure if you look back over your life, you can see times when God has given you information to prepare you for your future. And maybe uh, it's not until hindsight's 2020 before you figure that out. But God does give us information as we go along that gives us an idea, a concept of our future. Also, he's our high priest. He's the one who listens to us. He, he's our head pastor. He's, he's our lead pastor, our high priest. He's there for us to talk to. And he's there to impart wisdom to us. He says, if you'll be quiet and listen, I'll speak to you with a still, quiet voice. And sometimes we just need to stop and take time and listen. And you will. You will get a sense of him speaking to you. And then, of course, ever since his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, he's been our king, ruling over our worlds individually and collectively as a good and wise king. So those are the things, prophet, priest, and king. And then last week, last week we read in the scriptures and we learned what some of Jesus' heavenly responsibilities are. What Jesus' heavenly responsibilities, well, what's he do up there? Well, one of the things he does is he is the giver of the Holy Spirit. So when that moment comes and you decide, I'm going to follow this being, this God, this Jesus, I'm going to learn about him and follow him and I want to do what he says. He gives us a gift, a gift of the Holy Spirit. That's one of his jobs. And then uh, the second job he has up there is to rule the world from the right hand of God. He rules the world. Sometimes we have a hard time seeing that or, or sensing that. But it's true. It's true. This is his world. There's a whole lot going on in this world that's not of God. But it, let's not make any mistake. This place belongs to him. We need to remember that. That's important for us as to believers to have confidence in him and what he does and who he is for us. He is ruling the world from the right hand of God. Also, the, the other thing is we, we can get so caught up in how the church universal or how individual churches are performing. How churches perform. But let's get another thing straight. Not only is he ruling the world, he's the king of the world, he is also the Lord over the church. He's got this. And there are things happening, there are things taking place in the kingdom of believers that we can't even imagine or see. And great things. There are people who are going to go to heaven that we can't see a path other than to hell for them. But God sees it in a whole different way. God sees us in a whole different way. So God rules over the, Jesus rules over the church and over us, the body. Directing the hands, directing the feet. And, and you know, I think sometimes we think, well, I wish I could do more. I wish I could do more. If you're following Jesus and you love him and you're doing the best you can, He's happy with you. Don't feel guilty because there's somebody else down the street who you perceive as doing more than you are. Oh, they're helping more people or they're doing this or they're giving more money or they're giving more time or they're giving more of their talents. You, you know, as, as a musician, you know, seeing these, these folks out there like Chris Tomlin and, and uh, David Crowder playing music every night in front of thousands of people, you know, it could, be, it could be hard for me to see them succeeding that way and, and going, boy, I wish I could be doing that and get down. But I've got to understand, if I am doing my very best to assure that I'm doing the will of God, I'm doing enough. 
Can I do more? Always. But God loves us so much. He's satisfied with us. The fourth thing is very important. Jesus' heavenly responsibilities, and that's for him to be our intercessor. Because there's plenty of times in our lives when we just don't feel like praying, right? There are times we just don't feel like praying. We don't feel connected to the Father. It happens. We have those times when we just feel disconnected. The beauty of it is he's connected to us whether we feel like we're connected to him or not. It's a beautiful, powerful thing to remember is, is that when you feel like things aren't quite right between you and Jesus and, and you're feeling discouraged with yourself, Jesus is right there. He's right there with you, interceding for you, standing in for you, supporting you. When, when the devil's screaming at you that you're not good enough, Jesus is whispering in your other, yes, you are. You're my baby. Yes, you are. I love you. Don't listen to that guy. So today we want to wrap up this series on Jesus exalted in heaven by look at how Jesus is intertwined with our futures. Everybody wants to know and everybody wants to believe that their future is in good hands. That God has something special for us. That, that God has something good for us. We all want to believe that. That Jesus loves us so much that he is completely intertwined with our activities day after day. His plan for us. The, his plan for the world and a new heaven and a new earth. And if you read your Bible and you study your Bible and, and you look and, and you hear and see the plan that God has mm -hmm. for this new heaven and then this new earth that's coming, it tells us that not only is our earthly life important to Jesus, our eternal life is important to Jesus. He has a plan. He has big plans not only for us in this life, but he has big plans for us also in the afterlife for our eternal self. We should be excited about that. In a lot of ways, you can think of it, even when this life is difficult, it's just going to make the next one that much sweeter. It's just going to be that much sweeter when we get there. But before we talk about our heavenly future, we must first say that one of Jesus' responsibility is to overcome the enemies of God. Now, we look around right now, if you turn on the news or you read your feed uh, on social media or, or you look around, the, the enemies of God seem to be overtaking the world. In a lot of ways, sometimes I think we're fooled into thinking that the darkness is winning. This is not true. This is not true. If we believe that darkness is winning, we should just shut the doors and walk away now. Do we not serve a mighty God? Do we not serve a God who has told us, hang in there with me, we're going to be victorious? Isn't that the God that we serve? Isn't that why we get up on Sunday mornings? Get dressed up and come to church? Don't we come here for a victorious God? Don't we come here because of the promises all the way from Genesis to Revelation are true? Is that, is that not why we come here for? Isn't that why we're here? It is why we're here. It's why we're here. He has big plans, and he will overcome all the enemies of God. In the end, the throne of God will be the only one standing. Amen. Amen. All others will fade away or be overthrown by Jesus and his army. <coughs> we, 
We read last week that when the end comes, uh, God will hand over the kingdom to Jesus and Jesus will destroy all the enemies under his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed will be death, for he has put everything under Jesus' feet. Now, when it says everything that's been put under him, it's clear that this does not include God himself who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him, God, so that God may be all in all. All the enemies of God will be defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28 says. Also in Revelation 17, 14, we can't talk about this without throwing a verse from Revelation in there, right? Got to. Got to throw Revelation in there. Revelation 17, 14 says it this way. They will make war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will overcome them because he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. That's us. That's us. Who's going to be riding with Jesus? We are. Who's going to be in that army? We are. Who's going to be in the winning army? We are. Because we are chosen. We are called. We will be faithful. Today it seems like there's so much opposition to God. It seems like there's so much opposition to Jesus and to the church. That's okay. Why would we expect anything less? Why would we expect anything different? We shouldn't. I mean, it's all mapped out right here in the Bible, right? The Bible, a, the, a book of prophecy tells us it's going to happen and has told us for hundreds and hundreds of years that this is what's going to happen. Every prophecy in the Bible before today has come 100% true. Every single prophecy in the Bible has happened and come become 100% accurate up until today. What makes us think that the rest of it would be anything less than 100% accurate? So we need, to, we need to pray in confidence. We need to stand in confidence. Even though this storm rages around us, just like the disciples on the boat on the, on the Sea of Galilee that night, the storm was raging around them. They thought they were going to die, and they look over, and Jesus is laying in the boat asleep. Master, Master, wake up. What, 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 we're going to die. We're going to die. Jesus stood up, and what did he say? Be still. Let me tell you, good people of earth, there's going to come a day, probably sooner than later, that Jesus stands before all of the world and says, be still. This when we think we're going to be rolled over in the darkness. He's going to stand up and he's going to put an end to it. I believe that with my whole heart. God tells us right here in his scriptures that all this opposition will be overcome. All of his and all of our enemies will be defeated by a warrior Jesus that will take us with him to experience the victories. We will be witnesses to the new heaven and the new earth. We will see that. Whether it's in these bodies that he takes us from or whether it's when he calls the dead back to life, we will see that. You and I will see the new heaven and the new earth. We will 
We will see it. We have all heard that Jesus tells us through a conversation that he has with his disciples that when he goes to heaven, he will prepare a place for us. So in his earthly life, he gave us a glimpse of some of the things that he's going to be doing in heaven. And one of the things that he tells his disciples, and therefore he's telling us, is that when he gets to heaven, he's going to prepare a place for us, a place just for us. All together, almost like the quarantine thing, all together separate. <laughs> but how amazing is that to think that he's going to prepare a place. He has told us that he, along with our fellow Christian friends and family, that they will be waiting on this other side for us and there will be an amazing party to welcome us when we get there in our true home because he will bring us home to him. He will bring us home to him. He will. He is bringing us home to him. So when we leave here today, we know that he's gone on before us to prepare our future, to, to be a minister to us, to be our king, a good and wise king, that he goes on and he's in heaven to rule over the earth, to oversee the church, to intercede for us and to stand in for us, and ultimately to judge us. And to take us to victory with him. And to bring us home to him. What a glorious message. What a great promise. Especially now in these times. When we question literally everything. How can all this be happening? The Bible told us it would. How can people hate each other so much? Because the Bible said they would. That brother would turn against brother. Father would turn against brothers and sisters and families. That there'd be great hatred among people. That cities would burn. That wars would be waged. That storms would seem to overtake that night would seem to overtake the day. It's already been forecast. It's already been told. So either you can allow yourself to be overcome by the darkness or you can stand up, rise up in the promises of the light. Amen. What a glorious message for us. What an amazing future that he has for us. It's so good. Jesus is exalted in heaven today, believers. And he's doing everything he's ever promised to do. We need to remember that. We need to not allow the darkness to overcome us. We need to make sure we're in the light as he is in the light. So when you start feeling that coming over you, go to the places in the Bible where Jesus promises us he'll take care of us. That he won't leave us. He won't forsake us. He'll be with us. Before us, behind us, and to the sides. Protecting us. We need to believe that. We need to trust in that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that your promises are true. And thank you that you are our prophet, our priest, our king that you give us the gift of the Holy Spirit, that you intercede for us, that, that you've got this world in your hands. You've got the whole world in your hands, the, the, the song says. And that's true. That you, 
you, Lord, manage and control your church, not us. Not us, you. This is your church. But Father God, Lord Jesus, we're so thankful that you've gone to prepare a place for us. And that, Father God, you, you will bring us along. That we're participants in your story of victory and glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord Jesus, Father God, help us to keep our eyes on you even when the storms are raging. If we have to start singing our praise songs in the middle of crowds, so be it. Help us to represent the kingdom wherever we go and protect us and help us. Lord, help us to shine your light wherever we go. We love you, Jesus. Thank you so much. In your precious, holy, and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. See you real soon.